we're going to take a look at the flower of life and ask ourselves, what life are we talking about, practically speaking? So um, if you get away from anything spiritual or symbolic with the seed of life and the flower of life, we can look at, practically speaking, how in ancient times and even up until maybe 50 to 100 years ago, the compass was used for everything. So if you imagine we're living in prehistoric times where we're making cave drawings and even trying to draw a circle. You can go and go and go and a few people get good at drawing perfect circles, but they're very, very difficult to get, right? And when you do, this one looks pretty good, but it's not perfect. Uh, it's very hard to replicate. So, number one, we can't invent the wheel yet because maybe we could one day fashion a wheel and get it smooth and circular, but we couldn't replicate it. So the Greeks said that in ancient times, the compass was invented using two sticks in the sand and a string or a vine. So if you take one stick and put it in the dirt, and make it stay there, you could take a string or a vine and as you rotate it around, it would make a perfect circle. So that is the basic invention of a compass. So suddenly, uh, now we have nicer metallic ones, but suddenly we can draw a circle. So voila, the wheel is invented. So at one time, I remember talk, uh, them talking about in history class how important the invention of the wheel was. But I believe more important than the wheel itself is the circle. Once we were taught or figured out how to draw a perfect circle, we can now give life. Give life to what? We'll give life to a lot of other things. Um, so, in talking about geometry, we want shapes that we can replicate, like the circle, to repeat them and, and other shapes. Um, we use the word regular to refer to shapes that have congruent or equal sides all the way around. Like a triangle that's regular would have each of the three sides equal. So when we look at the seed of life, we begin to have the ability to draw certain shapes. You can kind of already see a rectangle here. So one of the first things we can draw is a rectangle. Uh, the first thing we tend to draw is a regular triangle. So a regular triangle means the three sides are even. You see these uh, shapes in a lot of buildings and roofs and in constructions for things like the cathedrals because they have a great balance and ability to work together to create strength and stability. Um, obviously, we also have right angles. You know, we can use the flower of life to make a stable wall. So suddenly our caveman drawings, if we had been in the caveman days, maybe our house would look like this and, you know, we tried our, our best. But now we can make perfectly perpendicular 90 degree walls and a roof that is more stable. Uh, when gravity is pushing down on this, it actually maintains its stability. But when gravity pushes down on this one, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, it will begin to continue to fall. So it creates strength and stability in that right angle. Uh, in addition, I mean, this is the Star of David. So it's more than likely in ancient times we use this shape to draw the Star of David. And the star in most cultures represents life. Uh, but we can make the perfect geometric Star of David using this uh, seed of life. But also, you know, you, it makes you uh, a little curious why most cultures have very, very, very thousands of years old drawings and carvings of the seed and flower of life. They're in the pyramids, they're in Turkey, they're in China, they're in many, many, many cultures. So I would recommend you Google actually the flower of life around the world and see a lot of the archaeology with it. 
So we have a rectangle, we have a triangle. Um, we can do, oh, a bunch of other stuff. We can draw a... Trapezoid, if we wish. And this would be an isosceles trapezoid, which means the left and right sides are equal here and here. They're congruent. Um, we can draw a hexagon, of course. So since there are six even seeds or flower petals, they will perfectly match up into a regular hexagon. In addition to a hexagon, we can draw a kite. So we can go from here to here and down here. I mean, in some of these shapes, there are other places and ways you could draw them. You know, we could have rotated it and even drawn it up here, from here, here to here, here to here. So again, we have another kite. And one of the last shapes, uh, if we were to draw a line going, connecting this dot and this dot, that would help us to make a perfect square. So now we can connect here, 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 and here to make a perfect square. Of course, I'm uh, drawing very quickly, so I'm not making it perfectly accurate, but you can get the idea. And I think one of the last shapes uh, we have is a you can make a, romp, a rhombus or a diamond shape. So in order to make a rhombus, in fact, I could rotate the paper like this. I can go from here to here, here to here, here to here, and here to here. So now we have a rhombus or a diamond shape where the four sides are congruent. So if we really uh, look at it this way, as a, if we want to be a builder and we want to construct things and make pyramids and make buildings and gardens and become an engineer and start designing things, then the seed of life and the flower of life, they give us the basic geometry shapes that help us design these things. A triangle, a rectangle, a square, a trapezoid kite, a rhombus. So we can make these shapes perfectly using circles, which is to me interesting that these geometric shapes that are lines are made from circles. So it's quite interesting. And if you watch my video on the Vesica Pisces, you also get special numbers like square root of one, which is just one, square root of two, square root of three, square root of four, which is two, and square root of five come from the Vesica Pisces. So there's a lot of interesting stuff that we can give life to. Now, if the flower of life was used, you could begin to connect dots and make all sorts of angles and um, shapes. So, I mean, this is just a basic idea, but I started to connect all of the places where the flower petals intersect. And you have angles of all sorts that you could use as a builder if you didn't have a protractor, which, you know, hadn't been used or invented until a few hundred years ago. So Flower of Life also gives life to an abundance of shapes, whatever imagination you have. Uh, you can begin to explore those different angles and triangles and different quadrilaterals and other shapes as well. So the Flower of Life is quite fascinating to me in the sense that it gives birth or gives life to the geometric shapes that we study and that we've used with a compass up until recently to design and create and invent the things we have today. So hopefully that gives us at least some understanding of how the seed of life actually is a useful practical thing that, let's say I wanted as a scientist or mathematician to remember something in history and never forget it because it could 
do some really amazing things to further advance our technology and our, our design, I would want this shape to be remembered. And this could very well be why it's carved in the pyramids in India, in Turkey, and in ancient places all around the world. I recommend you take a look at that because a lot of people have made good videos and uh, you can just do a Google search and take a look at some pictures. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, looking at the seed of life in a more literal way rather than a symbolic one.